Hey boys and girls, I can't believe tonight is the last night of VBS. Ugh, I know, but tonight we're in for a special treat because Miss Pam is going to show us something important in the Jonah story. We've talked about doubt, faith, and anger, but we want to end with hope. In the Bible, hope means expecting what we already know will happen. Even when we're afraid or uncertain, our hope is in God. God will always help us, protect us, and love us. Yeah. All right, so for one last time, let's learn something new. Have fun and find Jonah! In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. We have had a fantastic VBS. Each night has been wonderful. I've loved the actors, the, the narrator, the people who put the movie together. Each of the three weeks has been fantastic. I, if you don't know me, boys and girls, that guy that played Jonah, his name is Will. He's my son. So I'm very proud of two of him for his acting skills. But everybody worked together to make that wonderful. But when I was a kid, the way I learned the Jonah story was in a storybook. And I want to kind of review real quick. And then Miss Pam's got an amazing experiment to show you that's going to sum up all of what we're about all month long. So you ready? Here we go. So you'll remember on the first night we learned about we learned about Jonah and how he was called by God to go and preach to Nineveh, but he didn't like those people and he was afraid and he doubted. He doubted God knew what God was doing. He doubted he could be the one to do it. He doubted it would work. He doubted, he doubted. So he got in a boat and he went far away and then the storm came. And the storm, of course, was his fault because God was trying to wake him up. He was going in the other direction. And the sailors were like, whose fault is this? Who, what is this about? And Jonah admitted it. He said, throw me in the water. And they didn't want to do that, but they did. And then God provided a way to rescue him. God allowed him to be swallowed by a great fish. And that was the way God rescued him. 
On the second session, we learned how in that fish he prayed. Didn't you love that? He prayed. God woke him up. I don't know what it was like to be in a smelly, smelly fish, but oh my goodness, in that fish, that gross place, he knew that God had rescued him and was trying to tell him, you've got to have faith. You need to follow me. You need to believe. And so Jonah went. And we learned on the third night that when he went, after he got thrown up, isn't that gross? He got thrown up by the fish. We learned that he went and he preached and he was quite successful and the people listened. And he learned that that worked. And you would think the story on the third, last week, the third session, you would think that that would be a, a, like a happy story. But it wasn't for Jonah because Jonah was angry. He didn't like Nineveh. He didn't like what happened. He was thinking about himself. He was kind of a whiny guy. And he didn't like that, that God saved these people who he didn't like. And most storybooks end like this. But you learned last week that that's not how the story ends. I hope that you and your family will read Jonah chapter 1, Jonah chapter 2, Jonah chapter 3, and Jonah chapter 4 together. I hope you will this week. Because if you do, you'll learn so much. You'll learn that he then left the city and continued to whine and fuss. And he wound up under a plant. And then when God allowed a plant to grow to protect him, and then when the plant died, he was just more worried about his own comfort than he was about serving God. Now that sounds kind of like a bummer of a story, but the story shows us that this guy named Jonah uh, had some of the same experiences we go through. He went through uh, doubt, he went through faith, and he had some anger. But the story of Jonah is trying to say we shouldn't do that. We should, we should, we should hang on to the faith. We should believe in God and celebrate. And so we didn't want to end this journey with Jonah whining and complaining. Of course not. And so I want to read to you out of the Bible, this book, where the story of Jonah is mentioned again. And it's mentioned in Matthew chapter 12, and I encourage you to go home and read it. Let me read to you starting with verse 38. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a miraculous sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation ask for a miraculous sign, but none will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Even as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now one greater than Jonah is here. So Jesus mentions this story that we're talking about, and what he says here is that people are always asking for proof that God loves them. We complain and we fuss and whine, like Jonah, but there was once a day in which God gave them a sign through this prophet in this story. And that Jonah, just like he was three days in the belly of the fish, and then was, you know, was, was there, that Jesus will be in the lowest point. He will die and be in the grave for three days. But that Je Jesus will re rise again, and he will bring hope and forgiveness to the world. And he will be a far better person, and he is a far better person, a far better person to follow than anyone else, including Jonah, right? And so what we see is that, yes, Jonah had doubt. Yes, Jonah then had faith and prayed. And yes, God delivered him, but Jonah still was not perfect. And he was angry because he's a human being, and we as human beings aren't perfect. But the story ends tonight with Jesus pointing back to that story of Jonah, saying that the entire story is a reminder that just like Jonah preached to people who didn't want to hear it, and just like Jonah was three days as low as he could go, that Jesus, after the cross, would be as low as a human being can go as he was in the grave. But unlike Jonah, Jesus was Jesus. And when he rose from his grave, he wouldn't whine and have pity parties like Jonah did. He wouldn't be angry. He would come to bring deliverance and love. And Miss Pam's going to show you he would come to bring forgiveness. Forgiveness. The word hope is what comes to mind when I read this text. And hope, of course, is, that, is, is found because we know we're forgiven. You know, hope is an expectation that God's going to do great things. And Jesus is the source of our hope. And so we've had this vacation Bible school all month long to tell you a famous story, to get you to dig in deep and learn, to be willing to grow, but also to learn from it that, like Jonah, we need God. And sometimes it takes us a while to get it. But then Jesus wraps it all up tonight to remind us that this hope is possible because of forgiveness. Forgiveness that God has for us and that we can have for one another. It's a great great truth, isn't it? Well, Miss Pam's going to talk to you. She's got another cool experiment. I've loved all of her experiments. And when she's done, we're going to sing again and we're going to celebrate as we leave. Thank you for Vacation Bible School. Let's hear what Miss Pam has to say.
you know, been thinking a lot with all the different emotions that have come up during our vacation Bible school. And we've seen, we've seen happiness, we've seen joy, we've seen anger, we've seen fear. Today I want to talk about forgiveness and how fortunate we are to have such a loving God. A loving God that was willing to give us his son. It's pretty amazing. And so we have a son in Jesus Christ who's also our friend. He's also a brother, but he's also God. And he loves us so much. He just wanted to show us the way to his father. So we can think like a shiny penny we come into the world. But invariably, sin also comes in. And it surrounds us. But God had a plan for us because he wanted us to be his forever and ever. So in giving us Jesus, and if you do try to do this at home, please don't do this unless you have your mom and dad. I was 40 before I ever struck a match. Jesus is the light of the world. He lights our path, sometimes when we're in the darkness. But the most amazing thing that he did was going to the cross for our sins, because that was the plan. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed to God. He didn't want to go to the cross, but yet he was obedient to God, his Father, to the very end. And he knew the plan, so he prayed then that he would bring glory and honor to God. He prayed for his disciples because he knew they weren't ready to lose him yet. He still needed to spend more time with them. So he prayed for them. And he prayed for you and for me. Long before we ever came into being, he prayed for us because he knew it would be harder to believe without seeing. So he went to that cross and he died on the cross. And when he went to the cross, he was taking on our sins your sins and mine. And as you can see, our sins are being taken up. That was the cost. God loved us so much that he gave us his son so that we would have eternal life. It's a debt that we can never repay. It's a free gift. And what it requires of us is understanding who God is and that Jesus is his son and asking him into our lives, into our hearts, so that we can then share that love with others. But God bless you.
Stories in the super. I know. We've had so much fun this month. We hope you have too. I love that the story ended with Jesus and hope. Yeah. Jonah's story gives us hope that God has special plans for us and our lives, even if we don't know what those are yet. Jesus' life is a story of hope too. On Easter, we remember that Jesus rose from the grave and still lives. Yeah. Both of those stories help us remember that we are that whenever we are afraid or have doubt in our faith, we need to have hope in God and hope that everything will work out. Even though it seems like it'll be a while before we get back to normal, we need to have hope that we'll see each other again. We need to have hope that we'll be able to go back to school, go back to church, and see our friends and family soon. I hope you've had a whale of a time for VBS this year. Have a great week, and remember, God loves you. Thanks for helping us. Find Jonah! I look forward to VBS every year. I love it. I look forward to it, and I was sad when I thought, oh no, because of COVID, we're not going to be able to do it. But then we moved it online, and you saw all the wonderful people who stepped up to lead. I don't even want to name names because I'll leave people out, but I thank you. If you were involved in any way making Vacation Bible School possible, thank you. And for the kids and parents and adults and all those who are watching this, thank you for joining us for this month. Thank you for donating food to help people. Thank you for having energy. Thank you for having passion for God and for just worshiping and growing and learning together. And the great thing about technology is this VBS doesn't have to end. There's people in your lives who would benefit from this series. So tell them about it. We might be able to continue sharing this good news. You can relive it by rewatching the and so listening to the songs, maybe paying rereading the uh, the story of Jonah during the year, and and just revisiting it. Maybe doing some of the things that are mentioned in here, but share it with others. Let them know so that they can be encouraged by this message of Jonah that connects to us in so many ways. That deals with all the things that we struggle and deal with. Thank you for being a part of it. Let's close. VBS 2020 in prayer, and next year for VBS 2021, I am hoping and praying we will see each other in the pews together, and uh, we may use some technology like we've never used it, but at least we'll be together too. We'll be able to do both, and I'm looking forward to that. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you for the boys and girls. May they be blessed by this journey. May their parents be blessed. Thank you for those who led and made this possible. We give thanks for Vacation Bible School, Finding Jonah 2020. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen.